Well, thank you again for joining us at Completing Christ as we continue in our series that we've been titled, But God. We've been talking from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3 about some bad news, about how that we're spiritually dead apart from Jesus, and we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins, and how that oftentimes that the world and the enemy, the devil and the flesh rob us of but God. And even as believers, we have a tendency to allow those three errors to rob us of but God moments in our life. And then verse 4 of Ephesians 2 says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love in which he has loved us. Thank God for mercy and thank God for the way that he loves us. Today we're going to flip back to Romans. Romans chapter 5, and I, I want to read you verses 6 through 11. And then we're going to focus in on a couple of uh, words that he uses in this passage, which is another but God passage. Listen to what he says here. He says, For while we were still helpless, at the right moment Christ died for the ungodly. For one would hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. Verse 8, here's another but God verse. It says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we've been, we have been saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through, through the death of his son, much more we've been reconciled. We shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we will also exalt God through the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we now have received reconciliation. Let's look one more time at some bad news. There's some words that he uses here to describe the people that he's talking about before they became followers of Jesus. You know, in this, he, he talks about how that, that we were helpless. You know, there's, there's three words I want to pull out this text and share with you real quick today. And the first word is the word helpless. He says, for while we were still helpless, at the right time, God died for the ungodly. You realize that apart from Jesus, that we're absolutely helpless to do anything about our sin. The word helpless comes from a word that means without strength, powerless. <clears throat> there's nothing I can do to change my own situation. You realize that there's nothing that I can do or that you can do to, to change your spiritual state? That's why God sent Jesus. You see, we're born into sin, and there's nothing that we can do to change that. Thank God, but God, at just the right time, sent Jesus to rescue us. Man, I'm thinking about this time where we're having a party at our house, and this uh, teenager comes to go swimming and he jumps in the pool and he couldn't swim and man i'm about to jump to to run down to the pool to jump in to get him out and the guy swam out and grabbed him and pulled him out see his dad told me he couldn't swim but when he jumped off the board i thought he could swim he couldn't but but tony rescued him Tony swam out and grabbed him and pulled him over to the side. You see, that's just like we are. You see, that dude was helpless to help himself. There was nothing he could do to save himself. But at just the right time, Tony rescued him. That's exactly what Jesus has done for us. At just the right time, God sent Jesus to rescue the helpless. Apart from Jesus, we're absolutely helpless to do anything about our sin. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus at just the right time. Second word is the word ungodly. It says at just the right time that Christ died for the ungodly. The word ungodly comes from a word that means godless, without fear or reverence for God. Living life my own way, doing what I want to do in opposition to what God demands or God requires. And the most prevalent way that it shows up is in living a life of immorality, living an immoral life. Can I tell you that God is passionate about immoral people, that God sent Jesus for immoral people? Why? Because he wants to change their immoral lifestyle to a moral lifestyle. He wants to change us from living in opposition to the ways of God to walking in the truth of the word 
of God. Man, I, I, was, I was preaching a revival one time for a guy that I went to high school with. He shared part of his testimony that week, and he said, Wayne knows all this about me, that, that I was an alcoholic, but God, at just the right moment, sent Jesus, saved him, radically changed his life, and now he's a pastor. Man, I'm thinking about this lady that I met in Las Vegas. It was in a feeding line at a, a park that me and my pastor were helping serve at, that we'd gone to help this, this group reach out to some homeless people. And this lady was in the serving line, and she asked us if she could tell us a little bit about her grace story. And she shared with us how that she was a prostitute on the streets in Las Vegas. And these people began loving on her. They shared the gospel with her. She got radically saved. God radically changed her life from immoral living to moral living. Man, I'm thinking about how that, that man, those of us, in the South, oftentimes grew up with prejudiced attitudes and prejudiced heart towards people that were not like us, but how God got a hold of our heart and has radically changed our thinking. And we begin to view people through the eyes of God as people in need of a Savior. Man, God loves immoral people. God loves helpless people. And at just the right time, he sent Jesus to radically save, to rescue, and to radically transform lives. And then he, he, makes this, he makes this statement also in the passage that we read, that while we were yet sinners, that Christ died for us. We talked earlier in this series about what the word sin, sin means. It means to miss the mark. That Man, we were, we were living life our way. Can I tell you, there was a point in time when I was doing my own thing, when I didn't care anything about God, but praise God, He cared about me. You see, apart from Jesus, when it comes down to it, we are helpless, ungodly sinners in need of a Savior. But God, but God, at just the right time sent Jesus. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, even that while we're living in our sin, he loved us and he proved it by sending Jesus. You see, we, we need to understand that these two words, but God, change everything. That we were dead apart from Jesus. We were living in our trespasses and in our sins, doing our own thing, didn't care, controlled by the world, the enemy, and our flesh. We were helpless, ungodly sinners, but at just the right time. But God sent Jesus to become our sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. One of the things I've learned about me over the years, that apart from Jesus, there's absolutely nothing that I won't do. But praise God for the saving power of the cross of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross on my behalf. Thank you, Jesus, for coming out of that tomb on my behalf. Thank you for saving this helpless, ungodly sinner. And may I live my life in gratitude and appreciation for what you've done for me. I hope you have a blessed day. And remember, but God, and let Jesus be Jesus in you today. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.